Mono Green Tron, Green Red Land Destruction. Green Red Land Destruction actually has already won a trophy this year in our Dallas Open. Joseph Cockrell trying to give it its second win. So we have a judge call. Santa and Grace has self-called a judge. He had a sideboard card in his opening hand. Now, if you draw one in the course of a game, historically this would be a game loss. You presented and you did not present the correct 60. I do know in the last couple years, because the game has not started and it's in his opening hand, there, there is a downgrade path available if the judge should choose to take it. Right. I believe the path is Tannen fixes his board and must mulligan to six. Yep. We'll see what the ruling is and confirm that. The judge does not have to take that downgrade. A game loss is on the table if the judge, depending on what the judge deems is appropriate. Yeah, and generally speaking, when something like this happens, which you definitely want to do, you obviously call a judge on yourself. Yeah, the fact that it was a self-call from Tannen, it, if there was not a self-call, and, you know, say the table judge spotted it, then we're talking a much yeah, larger penalty. Yeah, that's a bad scene. Don't get mixed up in any of that. Yeah. But uh, if you're calling a judge on yourself, you're just trying to fix a problem, you're an honest yeah. player, you should get the downgrade. We'll think so. Yeah, now Tan just checking to make sure that, yes, this is the right deck. Looks like, yeah, confirm with the judge. Okay, get the deck, the proper deck to present present it. And I, I do believe, though, that he might, that... He will have to mulligan. I don't think he gets to have a new seven. Yeah, these fixes tend to remove the card, just eliminate it just as a card. You know, that's gone. You're yeah. You're a card in whatever context. Oh, I think he shuffles and draws a new six. I don't think it's the same hand minus the card. Well, sure. that one I'm not sure on. Yeah, yeah one way or the other. I, I had a situation recently where I kept an opener that was all main deck cards. Okay. And in the middle of a game, I cast a ponder, called a judge on myself because there was a sideboard card in the mix. That's going to be a game loss. It was not it? a game loss. It was the, not. The resolution was I resolved the ponder with two cards, fixed my deck otherwise. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that was a possible downgrade. Okay. Yep. Yeah. As, as not as steep as it used as to be. As long as you're not seeing it and it's impacting game decisions, it, sure. it, it, it generally plays. So if while cracking my turn one Scalding Tarn, I find a sideboard card that's not necessarily a game loss? Right. Yeah. You just, the judges are there to fix your problems. They're not there to punish you. When you call a judge on yourself, it's to fix a problem. When your opponent calls a judge, it's to ask a question. It's to make sure everybody understands everything. And this has been a change in policy in the last couple of years. Uh, you know, if you for players who are playing in the mid 2000s, especially in the 90s, you'd think, oh yeah, that's just game loss, right? And yeah. and it would have been. Things, yeah, things were different. Things were worse. Policy has really come a long way. Judge just confirming with our table spotter that this is indeed the right resolution. So Joseph Kakral now on seven, he'll draw his hand. So Green Red Land Destruction versus Tron. It's not the Blood Moon that gets Tron. It's the Stone Rain. Can you tell us what resolution there was? So it looked like the hand was kind of set aside there while they resolve things. Okay, so what they did is they got rid of the sideboard card, and then they actually just replaced it with a random card. So he does get a seven-card hand. It's not a forced mulligan, but right. he doesn't get a new seven. And he, Tannen has been given a warning. Now, he has no warnings of this type so far, so there is no further upgrade. Right. And yeah, now we'll see players. Uh, looks like they're both keeping on seven. All right, Urza's power plant, chromatic star for Tannen. Does, do you think he knows what he's up against? I don't think it'll take long to find out. Forest Arbor Elf, yeah, that's that's one of the scariest starts when you're playing big mana because they're not a green deck. Mm -hmm. They're they're a red deck. Very frustrating to get this pull when you're playing your winner in as well. As, there's yeah. not much Tannen can do. You make your land drops, and mm -hmm. you just hope you don't get Stone Rain. You hope the Stone Rains stop at some point. Sylvan Scrying. I mean, Tannen has turn three Tron. If Joseph does not have a turn two Blood Moon, Stone Rain, Molten Rain... The cards that he put in his deck that make his strategy what it is. Yeah, if he doesn't, then Tannen will have Tron and it'll be fine. If Tannen makes a turn three card, I don't think the red green land destruction can come back very easily from it. Yeah, you uh, turn the matchup on its head. Yeah. Suddenly, you are the LD player. A lot of times you see, it. and there's no red mana. Could be a Utopia Straw, yeah. Oh, wait. Just kidding. There's two red mana. You got excited. Yeah. <laughs> Lifetime of never beaten Ponza. Just, just, no, no, well, there's Stone Rain for the mine. Thanks for playing. He gets to keep trying again. 
ever the it's Optimus. It's not done yet. Just hand two more LD spells. Is that all the way on the right? He's got doubles or something. If it's two more land destruction spells, I don't know. Cannon yeah. draws another power plant. Stirring's, in, try stirring's into the mine, maybe. Third power plant. There's the mine. Okay, he has Tron again. Okay. We'll see if he gets yeah. knocked <laughs> off again. His deck's doing... This is a great great draw for Tron, honestly. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of stuff you need in the games that you're going to win in this matchup. Though this among the more lopsided matchups in the format. Oh, oh Stone Rain, yep. <laughs> Oh, another Utopia Sprawl. We could cast two Stone Rains. Ugh. Tannen says, which one do you want? The Power Plant. Tannen has another Power Plant. He actually still has Tron, Ryan. I mean, in his hand. See, yeah, he has the Towers in play. He has Mind Power Plant in hand. Yeah. Joseph attacks for one. Joseph does need to ultimately do something to close the game. All right. Mine. Tannen disguising whether or not he had another Power Plant. He does. Here's Star. So you can knock them off Tron, but they find it again. It looks like Inferno Titan in hand for Joseph, but Tron can overcome that. Yeah, Inferno Titan castable, but it gets Karned just as much as any other permanent, if that's the payoff. Here is six mana. Here's Inferno Titan. Three this, to ten, and yeah. ten is happy, yeah. All this, right, that's no Stone Rain. This is the part of the deck that leaves something to be as desired in this matchup. Against a lot of decks, your Inferno Titan is bigger than any spell they're going to be casting. Against Tron, you have to keep hitting the land destruction button. And there's Tron and Karn. Inferno Titan is gone. Huge win for Tan and Grace there. That's exiled under Karn. We'll uh, fix that. Now, I believe Joseph has another Inferno Titan. So we'll see if Tan has another Karn. Right. Yeah, the Inferno Titan fortunately would clean up the rest of this Karn. Yeah. Then there's still some uh, something else to figure out. You know, does Tan have more payoffs? Six, second Titan, remove Karn. And can't. Joseph is doing his best to disrupt him, but this. Tan is just unstoppable right now. Every turn he has the answer. Even a worm coil engine would be a pretty big problem for Joseph. Tan certainly has that. Oblivion stone and a land. Sure. And he gets all the Utopia sprawls. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna do it. O stone, crack it. Yeah, that's another huge swing in Tannen's favor. Absolutely. Just no hesitation. Land destruction you back. Take four of your mana. Five even. Birds, double sprawl. Arbor Elf. Yeah. Down to three mana now. Tan's firing on all cylinders, wanting this top eight. He's still trying to get that trophy. Oh, yeah. Not a team event this time. He's on his own. Joseph has picked up another Stone Rain. Okay, he's going to knock him back off Tron. But he's lost a lot of his mana, which means he's not yeah. able to cast more payoffs. And he's been through those two Inferno Titans. That, that, that's it for Inferno Titans. Still a Stormbreath Dragon, a PN Kieran, four Bloodbraid Elf, and four Tyler's Trackers leftovers. Yeah, those are all slower wins, though. At that point, mm -hmm. Tannen can just make land drops. Right. There's some Planeswalkers as well, a couple Chandra Torch of Defiance, and a Garrick Primal Hunter. But as long as Tannen can keep making <laughs> lands, he's way back in this you game. You have a Garrick Primal Hunter? Yeah. Sure, why not? I like that card. It's a fun one. Stone Rain takes care of the power plant. Tannen has an expedition map. All right. No, he will not be denied. The Tron is unstoppable here at every point. Yeah. I play four of these for a reason. This is crazy. Two mana. Here's Relic of Progenitus. He'll sack it. Exile both graveyards. Draw a card. Yeah. No reason to leave that one hanging around. And he draws into Karn. All right. I know what he's going to do next turn. Got a good bet. Unless he top decks Ulamog into land. Here's Tyler's Tracker from Joseph. Land and a clue. That's his now empty handed. I think Karn can take care of that. 
You have the option to go just for the tracker or the red source, but your corn gets eaten if you go for the red source, so you just have to go for the tracker. Yeah, and then I guess a Bloodbraid Elf would take care of your Karn, but he has to draw it. Right. But it's Could a just cast Worm Coil Engine this turn, honestly. It's okay. All the finishers for Car for Tron are just throwaway. You know, there's always another one. Yeah, especially because of the Sanctum of Ugin. Sacri Karn sacrificing Sanctum, finding Ulamog. If he's able to cast that one next turn, that should seal the game. Tracker's gone. Land and chromatic something. Sphere. No, walking ballista. Yeah, there was one left over because All of right. the sanctum. Ballista on one. And that blocks even in the face of a Bloodbraid Elf. So Karn's still around. Top card from Joseph. Now he's playing off the top of the deck. He knows there's an Ulamog in hand for Tan and not going to be long before this one's gone. And... That's going to be game. Tan and Grace overcomes three Stone Rains starting on turn two of the game and takes game one with Mono Green Tron, beats, beating Joseph Cockrell. Yeah, that's a big upset in game one. I mean, this, yeah. this is one of those decks. Stone Rain does not line up well against most of modern. This is the matchup that you're supposed to be able to just walk in. So can Tan and do it again? First, let's take a look at Joseph Cockrell's sideboard. I'd be surprised if he has anything for this matchup. This is a great matchup. Yeah. Yeah, sideboard, we have three Ancient Grudge, three Anger of the Gods, two Relic of Progenitus, two Trinisphere, two Obstinate Baloth, a Chandra Flamecaller, and a Braid, a Huntmaster of the Fells. So Pass. there's stuff that has marginal value. You know, destroying artifacts sometimes matters against Tron. As far as the main deck, you can cut these Lightning Bolts, I suppose. You know, bringing grudges, whatever. Okay. You're right, both not great. We can board those in. I don't want to cut anything else. This is, what, this is the matchup I want every right. round. Yep. Main deck very much geared to play against lands. All right, so on Tannin side, three Nature's Claim, three Thought Not Seer, three Thrag Tusk, two Spatial Contortion, two Surgical Extraction, a Graft Digger's Cage, and a Relic of Progenitus. So there's actually a lot of things he can do here, and I want to know what you kind of think of them. So we can we could board in Nature's Claim to try to fight against Blood Moon or Utopia Sprawl. We could board in Thought Knots and Thrag Tusks so that when Joseph keeps us off Tron, we have castable cards. We could lower the curve. Uh, you could also board in Spatial Contortions to try to hit Arbor Elves and perhaps Tireless Trackers. Do you like any of that? Contortion, certainly on the draw, seems way too slow. Uh, the, the approach that I like the most is getting in these more mana-efficient threats, in particular Thought Not Seer, you know, getting to four lands. That's, yeah. that's pretty reasonable. Um, you can't ever resolve it under Blood Moon. This is not a basic waste deck, so that's an issue. Uh, and especially if you're reaching for those. Blood Moon's already kind of a problem. Some number of the Nature's Claims, they do make sense. Thrag Dusk is pretty reasonable against most of the threats in the deck. It's not the highest impact card, though. It's not a matchup where gaining some life is huge. It squares off pretty poorly against Inferno Titan. I'm not in love with it, but it does make some sense to go a little bit leaner, try to play a game like that. But uh, I would expect relatively light sideboarding yeah. here. What I'm wondering on Tannen's side, so game one we saw a situation where he just actually fought through Stone Rains by continually having more and more Tron. Is that something that he can count on doing, or did a lot of things have to fall his way for that to be possible? I mean, that, that's realistically just what the deck does, right? I mean, you play four Sylvan Scryings, four Expedition Map, four Ancient Stirrings. The deck is just a ton of redundancy. Um, and he also had Obliv Oblivion Stone there. Now, he did end up activating it through having Tron mana, but he was only a turn off of doing it otherwise anyway. He had yeah. four lands in play. I do really like Oblivion Stone. I mean, you're against a Blood Moon deck, and usually when you get rid of it, you can some take some Utopia Sprawls with you. That just seems great. Yes. All right, so if you haven't had a chance to look at our weekly sale, time is running out here. Sunday's the last day of this week's sale. It's up to 25% off select modern singles. It's a great way to finish off that deck for the next open you might be attending. Head on over, check out the deal, StarCGames.com. And remember, Monday morning we start next week's sale. All You can find all this, StarCGames.com slash weekly sale. Get your ancient stirrings. Play your yeah, Tron deck. Cool. Find your Tron lands. <laughs> Maybe a Quark Clan Iron works. We do have a ban and restrict announcement coming up. We do. Do you uh, any thoughts on that? I would not be surprised at no changes. I would be in favor of an Ancient Stirring ban. Okay. I'm kind of on the no change board. I mean, looking at our meta game here on day two, this is where I want. I like it. 
Yeah, th this is the reason that the format is so popular. Yeah. People frequently say, oh, there's eight different decks. That means the format's healthy. I don't. I mean, it kind of means yeah. that the format's kind of nonsense, but, you know, whatever. It's not oh. a bad format. Agreed. There's some talk, yeah, about Stirrings and Opal. Kirkland Ironworks has won a tournament, but I really think that would, you will, can let that problem solve itself. I don't think Kirkland Ironworks will stay on top. Well, that's why you don't ban Ironworks. That's why you don't that's why ban, ban Stirrings. That's why you don't ban Mox Opal. You, you ban the card that has nothing in it for anybody. All it does is offer redundancy, and it offers way too much. This is a format where Ponder and Preordain are banned. Stirrings looks at five cards. Stirrings is certainly a very powerful card. The, the hits just keep getting better, too. Uh, walking Ballista made Tron a lot better. Part of that equation is that Stirrings makes it easy to find whatever you want. Do we have a Stirrings deck in the top eight? Uh, not yet. Tan and Grace, one game away. I mean, that that's a... Uh, I was just wondering. Right. That's not that's not you. That's not that, the that, way you that, take that, the temperature. That's, an, a, that's or an approach that I don't want to legitimize. That that's just like a, a conversation that misses the point. Cards can be fundamental, fundamentally inappropriate or too good for a format without you know winning every tournament. I'd always be down to get rid of Blood Moon. Find it just to be miserable. <laughs> don't think. I don't know. I enjoy games. Most games of modern. Most of large percent of games I don't enjoy involve yeah, that. Yeah, you'll admit that that's a personal bias thing, though. It's like I, I, I have a similar disgust for um, Chalice of the Void, but I don't think that that yeah. card is particularly bannable. Yet, like as long as people aren't turn wanting it, it's fine. If you have a format, I think we saw with no banless modern. Once you're having a format where turn wanting it's reasonable, then that card's pretty, like. What it does is it ignores the text boxes on things, which is uh, not so enjoyable. That, that format actually was less so about being able to turn one it, and more so that there was way more pressure to have a very high threshold of one of mana ones. spells. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Currently, there's a few things that uh, drive you away from that. For example, the big combo deck Storm, the legal tools, most of the good ones cost two. That, that holds Chalice back some in modern right now. Now, when Chalice of the Void is good against the combo decks, it starts putting in work against the fair decks as well. Bright Igress. Probably no changes. Ooh. Dad. Looks like Joseph going down to five. There is a lot of pressure on land destruction to have some early play. You don't have... I suppose on the play, a turn three Blood Moon or a turn three Stone Rain's fine. But if you don't have an, er, a, any sort of land destruction on turn three, by turn three in, in your openers in this matchup, I don't think you win any of them. Right. On the play, turn three is on time. Yeah. That's acceptable. It's like you need one of these red cards. Otherwise, I don't see what you're doing. It's also not realistic to expect to find a mana creature and three mana disruption in a five card hand. You almost need to keep just having one of those. And frankly, maybe even be happy to just have the one. And there's a keep on five and a scry to the bottom. All right. Turn one, Utopia Sprawl off Forest. So we could see a turn two Stone Rain or Blood Moon. He names red. Looks like there is a Stone Rain in the hand. So we'll start out there. Yeah. Despite uh, the mulliganing, things pretty well online. <laughs> Not going to get a Tron land this time, though. Ghost Quarter, Necromatic Star. Love the Ghost Quarter. I might be inclined to just leave that untapped. Ooh, and a big miss for uh, Joseph. No second land. That makes sure. the Ghost Quarter even better for Tannen. Do you think you just Ghost Quarter the Forest? I, I'm interested in that play. Tannen is going a different way. He's and this ghost, makes sense. Yeah. He has Sylvan Scrying. You have some time to set up, you know, there's the high possibility or the reasonable possibility that Joseph misses third mana again. You don't even know if he has a stone rain in the first place. Another deck in our top eight. Caleb Shear is going to fall short today, and it is going to be Robert Mendoza defeating Caleb Shear. So Mendoza, our burn player, into the top eight. Yeah, that's uh, kind of how it lines up on paper. Congratulations. We'll be seeing him. Uh, still no hit on the second land for Joseph. Yeah, we'll see if he if Tannen wants to pull the trigger on that ghost quarter now or whether he wants to just use map to set up Tron. 
I don't mind get that ghost quarter play. Right. He has time right now, and he gets even more time sacrificing that ghost quarter. I feel like this is a good spot for that. Especially because Stone Rain just completely undoes what the map just did. You may as well just use the ghost quarter. Tannen a pretty deliberate player. Usually once he picks up the card, that means he knows he's going to do it. But he sees if he can talk himself out of it. Fails to do so and fires away. No chance of getting Stone Rain on the following turn now. And he's set up to assemble Tron on the following turn. Unless he naturally hits it, though, no payoff. There has been a Worm Coil engine hanging out in hand. Yeah, Joseph picks up second land now. If he chops second land on the next turn, he can Stone Rain. But he hasn't gotten pressure on the board. He's going to be phasing down a Tron next turn if he doesn't draw the land here. He does. Forest, we're still going. That's timely. Yep, mine or power plant going to be hit by this stone rain. Stone rain down, the Urza's mine. So oh, Tannen gets to replace that one. Right. It looks like he's going to go through the chromatic sphere in case he draws a Tron piece first. Yeah, that informs which one you want to tutor for. Yeah. Not like colored mana going to be an issue. What mana through. Mine is down. Then he'll go ahead and use that expedition map. Did you get a good chance to see if he saw that Tron piece? We'll see if he refine it. Yep, finds mine again. Makes sense. Fewer mines left in the deck. Right. Still four towers. Looks like there's an Oblivion Stone in the grip. That one quite a bit worse based on the texture of this game than it was in the first one. Looks like he picked up another one. Might just run one of those out. Yeah, unless you have some stars or a map to run out. Pretty free to just commit that. Yeah, certainly those would be better. But it'll be Oblivion Stone for Tannen. Now we'll see whether or not Joseph has another Stone Rain. He does have a Huntmaster of the Fells if he can hit a land. And it is... Unclear here. Well, I think it's Utopia Sprawl. There we go. So still three mana. Next turn he'll have four. There's a Blood Moon. Okay. Yeah, make sure you put the Utopia Sprawl on a basic forest <laughs> if you're going to Blood Moon. Yeah. So make Blood Moon. Now, of course, this is into an onboard Oblivion Stone, so it's not great. Right. Now, if you can combine that with some stone rains, you can keep pushing that stone activation back. Right. Be interesting to see whether or not Joseph wants to, say, commit this Bloodbraid Elf. Tannen makes Walking Ballista on two. If this O-Stone goes off, that's going to be, well, close to the game. Tannen actually drew another Urza's Mine. <laughs> so, wrong Tron piece, but no way to see that coming. I believe I spot Chandra Flamecaller in Joseph's hand. Just want heavier on ways to just win the game. Yeah, that's the the six mana Chandra. Yeah. Bloodbraid Elf will cascade into, there we go, Stone Rain. It's a good hit. That was what he wanted. He'll go for the Urza's Power Plant, keeping Tannen off mana again. An update on our backup feature match. It is going to be Thomas Mathers on Crark Clan Ironworks in the top eight. He defeats Jocelyn Lambaria. So he is deck player number six into the top eight along with Robert Mendoza. Ooh, and it looks like despite a mulligan to five on Joseph's yeah. side, he's produced enough stone rains. Tannen missing that fourth land drop. Hunt master the fouls from Joseph. And Tannen has a pair of dismembers. Ooh, that's a steep investment. Yeah, one's fine, two is a lot. He also has a spatial contortion. Can't cast that, however. Right, no colorless mana. So Huntmaster is taken out by dismember, Tannen to 16. The wolf will stick around. 
Yeah, the wolf definitely much less of a concern. Tannen needs running lands and to dodge any stone rains. Ideally, it would be Tron. He finds a basic forest that checks the box. Fading the stone rain is still pretty important. He still has to figure out, you know, an actual game plan once he gets the Blood Moon off the table. Right, yeah, he's, he's very far off big mana. I mean, it feels almost at this point like the game plan is just drawing seven lands and then eventually casting some things, right. which might work. Tron does this. Yeah. Wolf swings in, Tannen down to 14. Joseph has drawn a Cyborg Trinisphere. This one makes sense. It, sh it slows down Chromatic Stars. Yeah, it's an interesting one as we see Trinisphere in play. On this board, it doesn't look particularly good. Yeah, I don't really understand the casting of it here. Because if the O Stone has to happen anyway. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. He makes the play. Tannen misses on land five regardless. Also has anti-synergy with Bloodbraid Elf. Yeah, if he top decks a Bloodbraid Elf, the Trinisphere will be... Be inconvenient. Tannen draws Ugin. Mm. Seven I mean, cards. The deck's not light on seven plus mana spells. So you're making uh, three mana. <laughs> Arbor 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 Elf. Elf? Oh, yeah. Three mana Arbor Elf swings with the wolf. Tannen down to ten. Big payoff. Just playing into that. That Oblivion Stone. Did Tannen hit the land? No. No. Now we're discarding. Yeah. This is frustrating on Tannen's side. This is a game that felt like this should have been easy. Right. He has a bunch of lands. He has a bunch of redraws. He has things like an expedition map, which, while it would take a little bit more time because of the Trinisphere now, it's, it's, it's just still finds something. land five. It's Oh, yeah, right. You can't do it all in one. Right. You're right. He could be looking at discarding. He also has that dismember yet. You have to pay three mana and four life for it. I think that the Phyrexia mana, does it add an account? Whatever. I'm it, not either sure. it either counts or it doesn't. It also just doesn't matter. Tannen goes to six. And now I think Joseph might make that last Bloodbraid Elf. Why not? Opponents at six seems fine. Or how about Chandra Flamecaller? That's pretty good on to deal six damage here. Yeah, Chandra Flamecaller make two three ones. Joseph Cockrell evens things up. It's, you can see it on Tannen's face that you rarely you rarely get such a good look against green, green red land destruction, and to not convert on it, right, feels bad. Fortunately, gets game three. Does get to be on the play? Yeah. But yeah, he managed to win game one in a really tough matchup. His opponent mulligan to five. Never feels good to lose in that spot. So what happened? I mean, it was, just, it was really just not finding additional lands. Yeah, just dismissed those land drops. Drew way too many sixes, sevens. On Tannen's side, he went very high on removal. We saw dismembers and spatial contortions in post-board. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, he's not boarding out lands for them, so I can't really comment too heavily unless he's right. boarded out some baubles. The two dismembers, those are in the main deck, and they, they line up really well against Arbor Elf and yes. Birds of Paradise. They, they're not good against Utopia Sprawl, which was, is, is an issue. So you do want to be able to knock Joseph off balance if you at all can. Yeah, so the additional removal with Spatial Contortion in, I think shows that he wants to fight over those mana creatures. Right. But he, he seems he flooded out... I mean, what I'm guessing his sideboard was is he put in the Spatial Contortions for these Relic of Progenitus. Yeah, that, that one's very easy to board out. And I don't think, based on what I saw there, the Thought Not Seer Thrag Tusk, it doesn't look like he's gone that strategy. Yeah, didn't see any of those. Yeah, I still saw Karns, Worm Coils, Ugins... So I think he's staying big. Right, Walking Ballista is still available. That, yeah. one, that one's great because it plays small or big. And I don't totally mind. I mean, if you get a Worm Coil Engine in play, it's very good against a Green Red deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it lines up pretty well against all of Joseph's payoffs. Some of them can make uh, an annoying game of it. P and Kieran. The planes with Gar Garrick Pryl and Hunter making creatures can be a kind of an issue, but not really. All right. Deciding game. Winner into the top eight. Joseph Cockrell and Tannen Grace. 
a fist bump, and then here we're going to go. Tannen does get to be on the play. Definitely something that matters against the Stone Rain deck. I almost wish that he had uh, brought some explorers to fight. <laughs> That'd be great in the matchup, right? right? Yeah, it's a very narrow sideboard card. <laughs> yeah, try to sneak that Tron out a turn earlier. <laughs> From Tan's side, he almost, if he had a hand of seven lands, he, I feel like you'd see him keep it. If it was two sets of Tron, for sure. These games, it feels like if he makes every land drop, regardless of whether it's a Tron piece or not, he's had a lot of time. Joseph on a mulligan again. The hands where the man is not Tron tend to lean on Oblivion Stone. That's true. But like six land Oblivion Stone, I'm into that. Yeah, I take that one. Your opponent might even make a Blood Moon, and in which case you get a, a two for one, if you want to call it that. <laughs> right. Good yeah. value. Yeah, Joseph Mulliganing again, and there is pressure. He, the matchup is very good, but if you don't have the Stone Rain, and it, it has to be ahead of schedule when you're on the draw against the natural Tron hand, which Tan keeping on seven, that's scary. Tron opponents keeping on seven, in my experience, means on turn three something bad is going to happen to me. Yeah, the, the things line up. One of the scary things about the, the deck is how well it mulligans. And given that... It can mull to four and still turn three car on you. Yeah, given that I know that Tannen knows that, if a player like this is keeping a seven card in with Tron, I am uncomfortable. Right. And we'll say, looks like... Jumping the gun there, waiting on the scry. Joseph scries to the bottom. Turn one, Tron, Peace, and Star. And we have a, stir a seal and scrying in hand. I bet we have a turn three Tron. Now, Joseph can always have a turn two Stone Rain. We'll yes. see Utopia Sprawl here. That's his answer to turn three Tron. Sprawl name's red. Stirring's picked up first hand and grace. choice between Sylvan Scrying and Ancient Stirrings. If you don't already have the second Tron piece, it makes sense to lead on the Stirrings so that you can find one first and then get the other. It's going for Scryings here. You also have to be very aware. You're going to get Stone Rain sometimes. You're going to get Blood Moon sometimes. And then this part of the game doesn't really matter. It's just about making land drops. Scryings into, yeah, into Urza's Tower. All right, let's see what Joseph has here on turn two. I see a Trinisphere. That one's not very good. Yeah, I didn't wasn't very impressed with it last game, and this is another game where I don't think it will be very impressive. I mean, Tron has a lot of large spells. They were already ready to pay mana for them. Right. Yeah, that is the bit of confusion is he dropped a card. That is the land he fetched for. There is the Trinisphere, yeah, you're right. He's making sure that's the land that he wants. So there's a Blood Moon available as well. Okay. There's the forest. Be a check for Tannen to have Oblivion Stone. Yeah, run out the Blood Moon. And Blood Moon is, yeah, just medium against Trun. Even though it's a deck relying on, on its lands. It's still, at the end of the day, just a ramp. Just a big spells deck. Yeah, the, the payoff in this matchup is the Stone Rains, not the Blood Moon. Despite being a 19 land deck, Tron pretty good at yeah. hitting land drops. <laughs> and Tanner will find his third Tron piece. It doesn't do anything while the Blood Moon's in play, but if he has an Oblivion Stone, you know, turn four Stone, turn five, remove it. Seems great. Yeah. Looks like there's an Ulamog in the middle of the hand. We're quite a ways yeah. off of that. I don't know that we can cast that one without Tron. That's it's tough. That's ambitious. It'd be a weird game. 19 lands, we need 10 of them. <laughs> That's a fair amount. Some of them getting stone rained. You know, it, that's a big ask. 
Birds of Paradise from Joseph. Still has that Trinosphere. He'll say go. Er, I think he has Huntmaster of the Fells. Yeah, and you see Dismember on the Birds from Tannen. Yeah, you may as well cash that one in. Joseph's payoffs cost a lot of mana. Right. Does Tannen have Oblivion Stone? That's going to be the Ooh, next question. Nature's Claim was picked up. This is actually an interesting question. When um, do you claim? Well, what do you claim? Oh, are you thinking about hitting the Utopia Sprawl? He'll hit the Blood Moon. I yeah, like okay. where you were going yeah. with it. So he has Tron this turn, so that, that makes sense to just go for the Blood Moon. Yeah. If he, d I do like thinking about that line. It's it's Stone Rain, the Stone Rainer. It. So now he's got nine, seven mana, and Ballista on three is the play. That's manageable. Yeah. Now he's got Sylvan Scrying in hand. We see Ancient Grudge takes care of Ballista. Joseph will take three. Tannen dangerously close to Ulamogging. Joseph, Ryan, I think he's a little heavy on board cards. His hand is Grudge, Second Grudge, Trinisphere. I mean, there's, Master, yeah. there's no way it's Stone Reigns in the sideboard. Yeah, I guess. I guess that's just how it rolls. Here's Huntmaster of the Fells, make, gaining two, making a wolf. The deck's just kind of clunky. Yeah. You know, I, I, I give some pretty sideways looks to my green-red land destruction opponent if they complain about their draws. I'm like, that, that's Same. what you signed up for. Leave yeah. me alone. <laughs> you know, like, I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> Ulamog in the hand for Tan. He has Sylvan Scrying. So he can set up for the Mog next turn. Can't make it this turn. Ancient Stirrings. If he finds Urza's Tower, he can make Mog this turn. Yeah, big look. Looks like there's a Karn and a map. Don't mind Karn. It's a little mopey against Huntmaster. It's fine. It's not bad. I almost want to go for that Utopia Sprawled Forest. You just plus it. Yeah, that's true too. He'll take Karn. Kind of like plussing it. I don't know how it survives. Tan's thinking. I think all three options do something. All right, we'll, we'll exile yeah. the forest. All Get right. him. This is what you get, Stone Rain player. <laughs> you wanna, you wanna, you wanna play the Stone Rain game? <laughs> Karn, Karn Stone Rains. I got two of them right here. All right, Karn's gone. That's fine. <laughs> you can. It have was this a Stone back. Rain. Yeah. Yeah. The stone Rain doesn't stay in play. <laughs> Joseph drew Stone Rain for the turn. <laughs> How does it feel? Yeah, I just can't. And go back over to Tannen. Huntmaster will transform. Tannen takes two. Any Tron land here means Ulamog. Right. That's, That's Tron, a Tron land. land. There we go. That's Urza's mine. I this this is gonna take all the rest of Joseph's lands. Here's Ulamog. Yeah. All right, Stone uh, Rain guy. There's, there's the forest. rest. Now I think he went Mountain Forest. It's a Ravager Forest. Either of those is fine. I can't. He's kind of pointing with his whole hand and is touching three things. Okay. Well, he's implying the they're land. all going to get exiled, which is true. Yeah. I'm going to take care of all of this. It says go. Joseph, can Huntmaster of Ravager of the Fells defeat Ulamog? I think it's overmatch. I've read the books. I don't think so. They're not in the same place. Was, was that a fight that happened in the, the, hunt, the lore? This, this, this guy, <laughs> grizzled werewolf man, well, came out the, of the forest. When the Eldrazi and then first Ulamog. showed up on it in his trod. <laughs> The old Huntmaster was, was waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they don't I tell don't you it works. They don't tell you about the battle for the Uvenvald, <laughs> but I was there. He picked up his hatchet and went to work. <laughs> <laughs> got, Tan's got an O stone. Uh Ulamog's indestructible, so that seems like a solid play right here. There's a combination. There we go. Get rid of all the other things. All right. All right. The blockers are gone. 
Now Ulamog is going to start going for the deck. Top 20. Joseph's hanging on, looking for his out here. Joseph with his one land, just kind of sitting there thinking, uh, is this what I've been doing to people? Yeah, this am, is fun. Am I the bad guy? <laughs> the Tron's the good guy in this matchup, it's clear. <laughs> and that's like, that's saying a lot. Yeah. Joseph to 11. Draws. It, it does, oh, something. And he extends a hand. And Tan and Grace with the win. He is into the top eight. Mono Green Tron winning 2-1 to one in what's got to be a matchup he thought he would not be able to get through. Yeah, pulled a really rough matchup. Managed to persevere through multiple stone rain effects.